Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Diary of a Property Pro. Now, this might seem a bit unusual because a lot of people like to promote the glitz and the glam of the property game and the property market. We're going to do something completely contrary to that. We're going to go into all the disasters and all the failures. So what what can you learn out of failure? Why do people repeat the same thing over and over again and expect a different result? What should you do? If you find that you're do that you've got the wrong structure, the wrong teams, or even just the wrong guys, or maybe even you lack the accountability, how do you handle that? How do you spot it? And what's the signs that you should be aware of so that you, if you fall when you fall into this trap, it's because it's not if, it's when. When you fall into this trap, how do you recognize it? How quickly can you get out of it? And what can you pick up from what had happened? So without further ado, let's dive right in. So the good and the bad of property, what stands out to you in terms of, in your experience in the last, say, four years, like there's going to be some highlights, there's going to be some really, really great things that have happened, yep. there's going to be great results, there's going to be uh, great things that you've learned, there's going to be great habits that you've formed, like, but th that isn't where it ends, there's also going to be things that didn't work out the way you planned and mistakes that were made and pitfalls that you fell into and maybe along the way you found some bad habits that you had to dial out. So like what stands out over the last four years that you think that was, I learned a lot from that? Yeah, f first, first of all, I think it's very, very important to get a, a really, really good mentor behind you as well instead of trying to go that path alone. Uh, if you've got someone, obviously like yourself, who's who's been in the game a long time, um, who's obviously helped me over the years, getting that good mentor behind you, not showing you what to do, but just kind of nudging you on and helping you if you, you you fail at things, you know. But again, I think it's it's very important to fail as well, so that you can learn from it, and that's helped me through the years. Um, some of the major blows and and things that's happened to me over the years, as I said, is Probably the the worst one is I think renovation teams getting that right renovation team in place. What I tried to do over the past few years at the start was build my own business, get the employees on board, get joiners on board in house, um, and I don't, that just never have worked for me. So what we've done now is we've, we've so tell, tell me what that tell me what that plan was initially. What when you initially had the plan, what was it that you set out to do? So you well, mentioned there you were going to you, you had this idea of how it would be, and that's not how it is today. Nah. So what was it like at the start? I thought you I thought it would have been great to have all your own vans, all your own team, your office stuff like that. You know, um, I had that vision in in, in my my head where oh this this will all look great, I'll I'll look amazing if I've got all this. But as you start getting into it. I'm not saying all employees are bad, by the way. Like some of them can, can be good and long term for businesses, but some of the guys that I had on board were basically useless. Um, going out to jobs and stuff, as I said, jobs going over two, three weeks, not making any money. Um, guys sitting in their vans outside jobs and stuff like that because they're just getting a wage at the end of the day. You know, there's no incentive to go out there and, and actually earn extra money. These guys are happy in their jobs, just plodding away and doing a wee bit every day, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, how long did it take for, was it like the first job you seen this sort of unfold or did, was, did it take a while for it to sink in? I think I was a very, very unexperienced at the start, you know, so I was just quite happy to get jobs done even if I wasn't making any money, you know? Uh, You'd be soft. giving people the benefit of the doubt? Giving people the benefit of the soft. doubt. Soft. Too soft. Um... It's going to be all right. It'll all work out, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, again, very, very unexperienced, and for, for, from all that stuff that, that that happened, I learned a lot, you know. And it took me a couple of years to, to actually come out the other side. But um, what's it like going through that? At the start, I think you just put it to the back of your head because you're like, "That's fine. Don't worry about it." But once complete it's denial. Worked, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. It's, it'll all work out, you know, and. I was just quite happy to have, as I said, all the, van, the vans with the sign writing on them and all, I've got all these guys working for me, look at me, this is great. But the bank balance said different, you know. 
Well, I said to you, I remember saying to you, you know, uh, I think you were getting caught up in the glitz and the glam of how things look. And the front, the shot, the shot front um, picture. So when you get people that get caught up in that, they tend to focus on the, the you know, the big headline information. Mm-hmm. What does it actually mean when, it, when everything's set and done? So when, what do you get out of doing this? And I remember I said to you, says you can do it, you can take on a million pound contract. If you're making one pound, yeah. well, you, you wear all the risk and hassle of whatever's involved in that million pound contract and you've only made a pound, you were better going and getting a job, at, you know, minimum wage. So these things is where I think what you would experience was is that the, the, the vans in the office and it would look great, mm-hmm. and this would be great, wasn't really how it was panning out because how it looked at the front of the shop to what was actually happening behind, you know, the till, they had a mismatch. Yeah, it's really important to talk about stuff like this because it's, it's all right. People talk about all the good stuff, as you know, but talking about this stuff is, is good. I mean, I can remember you saying to me as well, like some of the jobs that we were getting in are maybe twelve thousand pound worth worth of work, but it was costing us thirteen thousand pound to do the job, mm-hmm. so or even more, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's all down to, again. Like, you've got to take some of the blame yourself, but you're bringing on people to to do a job for you. And you expect them to do it in that time frame. And again, it all comes down to experience. At the start, I was very, very unexperienced with what I was doing. I just wanted to look great. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, sometimes that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it, I've actually met a lot of business people that have went into the construction industry and been burnt mm-hmm. because of these things. The uh, the dealing with people that are that are paid on performance versus people that are paid to show up mm-hmm. are not the same. But when you go into the construction industry, they look almost identical. They'll show up in a van, they'll show up with the right, the t- same type of clothing, they'll use the same words, but the outcome is extremely different. You can look as good as you want, but if the jobs aren't getting done in time, you're not making profit, means absolutely feck all, mm-hmm. you know. Um, maybe it took a couple of years to, 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 to realise that, but... Like how, like, when did the, like, so, you know, the first couple of jobs, right, we're losing money, giving guys the benefit of the doubt, uh, I look, give them another chance. How long did it go on? Do you know what? We were, we were that busy and we were getting that much work. Um, obviously, we were, we were making money in some jobs, but other jobs we weren't. But we were that busy, um, we ended up drafting in a couple of self-employed guys who were just obviously quoting the job. We were putting a, a percentage on it and... They were making their money. They wanted paid as quick as they can, so they were getting the jobs ch- uh, churned out as quick as they can. Um, and then we were making our 20 or 30 percent that was on top of it. So I was like, this, this is better than what I'm doing down here, you know? I mean, I'm losing money with my, with my own guys who I trust probably more than the subcontractors. So penny dropped, and I'm like, what am I doing here? So, I so think you're losing money to look good, and then the path that doesn't look as good is actually the one that works. Yeah. And, and it's it's mental how that just flicked in my head. Um, even some of the guys that we were bringing on, like they, they promised you they were all, they're great, they're amazing what they do. Some of the stuff that I could tell you, um, which, which happened in some of the jobs. Can you give an example? Like what, what comes to mind? I mean, I put a, a plumber out to a job in um, Glasgow once, one of the tenement flats in Glasgow, and I asked him to rip out a bathroom and take a partition wall down. So he took one of the... Um, apprentices out with him I think it was like the third floor uh, the tenement you know, the tenement buildings in Glasgow so he took one of the apprentices out with him the the, the plumber who's a tradesman left the job without telling anybody just went away I wonder because this is what these guys were doing with us um, and just and told the, the apprentice to start kind of just ripping stuff out so the, the apprentice put a hammer through the partition wall to, obviously to take the partition wall down and it was the main water main going up through all the flats and there was no way to turn it off. So he's burst the pipe and it's pissing out as fast as it can. You know how fast these main water mains came out. and it well, high pressure. We couldn't have done it off. So all the flats below were getting like drowned with, with, with water out. for about an hour and a half. So that's some of the crazy stuff. Like, So you can imagine everybody running out of their flats. There's an apprentice on the job with nobody else. This guy's just fucked off. Because he went to wander in one of my vans. Um, that was a disaster that day. 
Exactly. And that same guy, we've got another story for, for him as well. We were we were doing like an ensuite in a a flat in Glasgow as well. Um and running the pipes for the ensuite out to the main the main pipes, he, he was cutting a channel through all, all the the spans of the rafters. The joists. The joists that were holding up all the, f- the other flats above. So he's cutting out the structural timbers of the flat. Yep. You just could ch- start bend. chopping a bit he's out of them. Chopping to get like a 30 mil pipe through. Right through all the, f- the f- lot of them. Um, so see when the surveyor came out, obviously downstairs is like, I'm starting to get cracks in my ceiling. So he's came out and, and looked at it and had to like get into the flat below, prop it all up. We we joined it all together with big bolts and stuff like that. So that could have been an absolute disaster as well. Wow. So that's just some of the, the crazy stuff that happened back in the day. And this is the thing is like who's left paying the you know, who's paying who paying well, that's, the that's just does at a loss again. Yep. You know? Um So you went from making money to now it's cost you money because you've got someone that you've trusted who's not done what they said they they, they, would, they would and now you've went from making profit to Dealing with headaches with neighbours, dealing with headaches with the client, dealing with headaches with you need somebody else to come in and do the remedial work yep. because this guy's butchered structural wood. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who don't know, when you have these big huge beams in your house, a lot of them in older houses are timber, and the 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 width that they span they're a certain height, and that height is to can support that span that distance. So if you start cutting that wood out, you're weakening the wood because it, it's its strength is in the fact that it spans across the distance. If you take a bit out of it, it now it's now a reduced height for the span, which then causes it to bend. It's called deflection. It bends down, and that's what's pushing down on the flat below. It was weakness in the structure, they were, they were saying it was called. Um, and obviously because it was one of the lower flats, it was holding up all the other three or four flats above. Mm-hmm. So it could have been a major, there was, there was talk of maybe evacuating the full building and all that. It <laughs> happened, it was that, that bad, you know. Evacuating the building? Aye, because obviously it was one of the bottom flats, it was holding the flat above, so if that collapsed, like the other one would have collapsed, you know. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't take a chance, but they ended up not, and it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as we first thought, but you've got to go through all these stages when something like that happens, just to eliminate the worst to the, mm-hmm. the better, you know. Um, what was that like, dealing with that? Stressful, it's very, very stressful. What day was it? Yeah. Do you remember what day it was? <laughs> no, I can't remember. I remember days like that. I remember like <laughs> it always happens on a Friday. Yeah. You never get a phone call on a Monday. Something's always kicking off. It's a Friday night. It's the same now with the, the, the management company, isn't it? It's like Friday. Yeah. It's the, the mental day. Yeah. And you get, you know, it's if you're if you're calling up guys to go out and solve something and they're like, you know, why is it I get called out at like ten o'clock at night and I'm like, look, this is the time. Yeah. Like people don't people don't have issues at normal working hours. Yeah. It's always out hours. Uh and that that's the nature of it. That's the nature of the beast. Yeah. But what going back to your timeline when you were going through that, when you're going through these sort of situations, was it an e- like how easy is it to unravel that? So you've started with Employees, vans, experience myself as well. Yeah, so you've got the inexperience. Yeah, you don't have the experience. You're learning. You're finding your feet as you go. You've got this idea of how it works. It turns out that you're using other guys who are like, well, we want, we want paid, and we want to do it quickly. The the day, so. No, the subcontractors are yeah. self-employed guys are going. Look, well, we want paid. We want to get the job done. We want more more work. So if we do a good job for you and we get it done quick, then you can give us more work. Well, that wasn't all great at the start either with subcontractors. Like, you need to go through guys before you get the good guys, as you know. Um, some of them come in and promise you the world, you know, but they're only getting paid for what they've priced the job at. So if they don't finish the job, they're not getting paid. And that happened quite a lot. Like, what would that look like? So you were getting guys saying, right, we'll get the job finished for Friday. So you, if they were going to finish their part of it, you would then book in other trades, like maybe the carpets, get the, put the carpets down or, or book in the painters after them. Mm-hmm. So... As you well know, if somebody fucks up at the start, it's a snowball effect on everybody else, and then you've got other guys moaning at you. So, going through that stage with um, many, many, many tradesmen as well, throughout maybe about 12 months or something like that, just to find your feet and get the right guys. Luckily enough, obviously, we've got um, two very, very good teams now that you don't even need to go out and check on them anymore. 
Um, all the guys work together, so it's it's great. How many teams do you think you've went through? Like how many attempts? If you use the analogy, you, you've got to kiss a lot of frogs before you get a prince. How many frogs do you think you've kissed? I think trades. You go back to like the start. So tradesmen. Um, I I would reckon twenty five, thirty tradesmen. Books in. Wow. You know? So you imagine it's uh, people out there listening. You think, yeah, I can take on a refurb. Yeah. Tw- imagine the hassle of I've priced up a job and I think that it's going to work. So whether they're doing this for a client, whether they're doing this for themselves, whether it's their own project, whether it's something they're working on with somebody else, mm-hmm. you take a project that's you know fifty thousand, and then at the end of it, it can be a hundred thousand because you've went through these many sort of trades guys that, to to find the good ones. Mm-hmm. Inevitably, here's the question: Are the good ones and the bad ones the same money? Yeah, they're not. The yeah. good ones are usually more expensive because they know they're good. And then you were lured in with the cheaper guys because you think, well, keep the cost down. And then they're paid whatever they, they get. And then you need to redo the work. And then guess what you need to pay? You need to pay the high price for the good guys. And now you're double double out. Yep. You're double expense. Yeah, I mean, the work was never the issue as well. Like, we're constantly getting work in um, because we were finishing the jobs. Maybe we weren't finishing them um, on time. But... They were getting done. They were getting done good, but we're taking that bit longer. Obviously, we st- had some of the hiccups. You've always, if you've got a bad egg in there, you need to get rid of them straight away. But I learned that as the, the years went on, um, and I can remember going over all the numbers and stuff for you. And we were going to, we were going to try and save save the company. Obviously, the company went bust at the end because it was continuously losing money. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can remember t- sitting with you in the office and, and going through it all, and we're going to going to get a go and try and save it, and then. Just collecting like what what's the point in this? We've got all this work ahead of us. Let's just cut our losses here, um, and move forward with fact but what's actually working and that's self employed guys, mm-hmm. decent self employed guys who'll go out there, give you a price for a job, um, you put your bit on top of it and you just oversee it. Um, jobs are getting done because the guys want paid, as you know. Um, jobs are getting done to a good standard as well. Clients happy, you're happy and, and it's 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 just the way forward just now. What do you think in terms of like if if people are out there thinking about like what makes up a good team? Like, how do you really find out? Obviously, that- <laughs> obviously, you need to get through, you need to get through the bad <laughs> stuff first, as we said. It's, <laughs> it's like a it's like a rite of passage. You need yeah. to have a stinker before you, you figure out it's a good one. You need to get through the bad stuff first, and it's, it's unless you are in that trade yourself and you're willing to. You've got somebody that you've worked with for years who you know who can do a good job and they're willing to go out and do the work for you. That's fine because you know them. But if you're just starting out in property investing, you need to build a team around you from solicitors, mortgage brokers, uh, management staff, refurb teams, right through to everything. So um, all of the parts, I think you get through every single one of the parts as bad. Until you get the right one, even solicitors, as you, as you know, some of them are, are, are worse than others. So yep. I went through like quite a few of them as well. And people don't understand for anyone that goes, "Well, how can a solicitor be bad?" Well, Time. the solicitor is essentially given a, a set of guidelines, and how they interpret those guidelines is varies dramatically. And you get people that like solicitors just because they have a professional um, title, they they are, they are humans. And human nature is, is that you get people, after, like I've used tradesmen for so many years that you get a good tradesman and they can go bad and then they can go good again. Mm-hmm. So they have these like fluctuations where, you know, they'll just make their heads not in it. Maybe they've got something going on, uh, you know, a job that they would have done with their eyes shut, they can't do because, you know, they're just going through a little cycle. And you get solicitors that are like that, you get mortgage brokers that are like that. I, I don't know... I was th- I was talking to I was talking to a, a guy I've used for years, and I think that we've nearly came to blows twice, like yeah. full on, full on heated arguments, you know. And uh, and it's like that time where you go, well, you need to have those situations, uh, you know, in a different opinion. And believe it or not, we ended up like going, yeah, right, we, well, we've came to a conclusion. But it's these things where you need to go through that process. Of dealing with it, but f- do you think there's a secret out there for people that go, what should I look for? How can I spot it? I don't think there's any secrets in this in- industry. Um, you need to you need to just go out there and, and, and deal with the shit. 
that's my my thing anyway. As I said, especially see if you're starting out and you've got nobody. Mm-hmm. You're going like if you get a refurb and you say to a guy, Listen, I've got a refurb, I want you to start doing the work for me. Yes, I can do it. I'm brilliant, I'm amazing. I've heard that many times. Mm-hmm. Um and then you go out and so I'll be there on Monday, you go out to meet him on the job Monday and he's no there. So you need Monday to get club. Through, yeah, Monday club. Um <laughs> you need to get through all these these cycles, I think, as well. So anybody that's starting out, like it's not gonna be it's not gonna be all great at the start. Um it's well, took me it's took me four or five years to get to yeah. this point and get the right guys who I can trust, who I would put probably call friends now as well. Yeah. So I've been doing work for me that long. Uh they're making money, they're happy, I'm giving them the work. So they want to work for me, you know. So say somebody gets a refurb job, uh, or any any job that involves any trade solicitors or anything like that, um, professional or tradespeople, say they've got a shocker, say something's not working, what should they do? Don't do what I done at the start and just let it roll for months <laughs> and months <laughs> and think it's all going to work yeah. out. I, don't use hopium, <laughs> where you just like hope that it'll all work yeah. out. It's everyone's going to be fine. Right. Uh, definitely don't let it. Like if you've got an issue, it's in any business now. Like it's just to be, I'm, a, I'm a as well now in businesses. If you've got somebody that's not performing there for you, get rid of them straight away. Yep. Don't let it hang on. Even if it's an employee or if it's a subcontractor, if it's a solicitor or a mortgage broker. If they're not performing the way you need them to perform to make your business grow, you just need to get them out. You fire them as fast as me, though. No, you're you're here for good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying do you fire people as quick as I do. Um, you, tend, I'm you, uh, you tend to be you tend to be uh, you tend to soft. be quite fair. No, you're fair. Yeah. Some people would say soft. Yeah. Um, kind-hearted. You you're considerate. Uh, I, I, they are gifts I've yet to receive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're good at that. I'll give you that. Um. I mean, everybody deserves a chance, I think, but, like, at the start, I was given too many chances, yeah, I think, yeah. you know? Yep. You have a word and you say, like, this isn't the way I need it done. I need it done this way. And you give them a chance, and if, if that doesn't work out, it's time to go. Yeah. Um, you just, um, you, you can't you can't let it happen in business. If it yeah, cut, cut you, quick. If it's not working and there's, there's, if you've got that time pressure, the pressure's time, mm-hmm. time's money. Um, Time can dictate if it's a good result or a bad result. So if someone is delaying that or causing that time delay, you might want to give them another chance, but it might not be the right time now. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you're better just switching them out, just cut them fast and say, look, you know, I like what you're doing. This one hasn't worked out. I think you've got a lot of potential. Here's where it didn't work. Here's why we're having to switch you out. Uh, go away and work on that. Maybe if we get something that's got a longer time span, you know, you work some thing, whatever the particulars are, you work whatever it is out, then we can, we, you know, we're not going to burn the bridges here, but the pace that we need this at is not where the pace that you can perform at. So it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think being being honest with feedback with people is probably the way to go. Yeah. And it's that constructive criticism that if you are, like, it's just like you've said, like you've, you've had the, you've had the, feedback from the jobs the results feel that you've had you know people take advantage of your nature and that that, that's sore because you you've trust you've probably put time and money and effort you put your reputation on the line and it's all unraveling it's backfiring it's blown up in your face and you're thinking i don't like surely this can't be it that was hard to get that was that was a that was a hard point as well at the start because see see because you've put all that money and that time and that effort and bought the vans and you've got the staff and you're like, I can't just give this away, you know. Yeah. Um and, and because of the people that we had on on board weren't performing to the level that we needed them to perform because I was too soft, um it, it came to an end, you know, and yeah. you sit back and you go, All that money and effort that I put in that for nothing. But yeah. again, is it for nothing? You learn from it. You're ha- you're you're passing on to the next part of what you're going to try. So, um, it wasn't all bad, you know. I think we learned quite a lot out of it as well. Well, maybe from a financial standpoint, it wasn't the result in terms of it. Was it, the the result wasn't financially there, mm-hmm. but the learning curve was there. So, what you learn from it, I always say that when you have a mistake and you learn something from it, and it makes you better. That and it's cost you money. You're paying tuition. Yep. Right? You've been paid to be taught. It's like paying, the lesson. A mentor, paying a mentor, isn't it? That's it. You're, yeah. you're, you're paying the market to tell you what you need to know. You're paying, hey, look, I didn't get that right. 
I needed to work this bit out. I figured out where I went wrong. Here's what I need to do next. You're just paying the toll, you're paying the ticket. Some people don't learn from it, but you know, I, yeah, yeah, some, absolutely. Some people will just fuck up and fuck up and fuck up. You know, we've all been there um, to a degree. Like we've all been there where we we go, we can't believe that it didn't work, so we try it again, and then it happens again, and it's like the mar the the market's paying you, you you're paying its tuition. Going, are you going to learn yet? Yeah, are you going to yeah, learn yeah, yet? Yeah. Have you learned it yet? And at some point, people like people that are quick go, look, I'm okay. I need to change up. There's other people that just keep going, yep. and you know the type. You know the see, type. You, see when you crack it, then you go, like, that was worth it. Yeah. But you know you need it. to let go of what you initially thought and, it was and you start hard. letting go, that it's was hard. A hard thing. It's very hard, that was something I, I really struggled with and that's how I tried to keep hanging on, I'm like, it all work out. Yeah. Um, gladly it did all work out in the end, but it took its time. So at the time that must have been pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, try, try to bring up two young kids, uh, get, getting married and stuff as well to, to my wife and, and going through all the, the bad shit at work and trying not to bring it home, you know, so... Um, it was a very, very tough time, but again, we fought to the end and we got through it. Obviously, the business went out of the game and stuff like that, but we also had other businesses businesses in the, the background who, which could step in and still work with the investors, which we were doing anyway, but we just brought the, the refurb side of that into that business, which is now blown right up now. It's really, really good. Um, again, right teams in place, right systems in place. Trust there, more experience, which is a big part part as well. I would say for anybody, like my, my top tips for anyone that have they go out and something blows up in their face, is own it. Yeah. Right. So there is nothing more. Like you might think that I think back to mistakes that I've made, and you, there is nothing more powerful than when you are involved with some. We're in the people industry, right? We're in the people game. So whether it's people that uh, are working for you, whether it's people that have uh, asked you to do something for them, so they're your client, whether it's a, an investor, so maybe someone, you and someone else have joined up to do a, a deal, right, where you agree something and you've made the mistake and it's something you haven't spotted, maybe something you've missed, lack of experience, maybe it's uh, just a mistake that you made or an error. Right, when you own that and you go and take that to whoever you're involved with and go, look, I've made this mistake, it just it puts you right to the point. Like You don't go through the, who was it, uh, let's argue the toss, it wasn't me. You skip all that level and you go to, right, what can we do about it? Yep. Right, so we know, we know it's happened and it's known. What can we do about it? Like What can we do with what's known? And you, it, people will give you so much respect for just bypassing that whole bit of, well, it wasn't me, it was him. Why well, asked him to do this? And it was that she she was supposed to do this. And it's it's that ownership that just set that just takes all that effort and energy that would have been used on nonsense yeah. and puts you to you can apply that energy to how can we fix it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that means if you, if you've got a, a good business partner, you would you would expect that anyway. You know. Well, this is the thing about it's, it's like people. Uh, I've been speaking to the people that are in the community. So the mindset community beta phase is going through. Uh, it started now. The people that had signed up for the beta testing emailed them out and says, "Look, right here, we've opened it up. You're getting access access to all the premium features. So like, let's have it. Let's start using it. Let's see what. Let's see how this thing works." So we've been using it. There's been some great interactions. And one of the questions that came up was. Um, like how do you how do you measure your progress? And these are the things. Like I was thinking about this. It's good because by the time I answer this in the community, this episode will not be released yet, so I can let it out of the bag here. Yep. Is is that when you try something for for reasons unknown, we think that we try it and we go from let me have a go to success. What actually happens is we have a repeated series of failures, but we have forward motion towards success, the outcome. And it's this back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. And what we want to do is every time you get back, learn how you can skip that backward slide. You ever remember the game Snakes and Ladders, the board yep. game you used to play when you were right, away? Down, yep. Right, so you're playing that game to try and avoid the snakes and you want to climb up all the ladders. Well, success is like that. That, that There is going to be squares that you land on in your, in your little journey that are going to pull you back. Yep. They're, they're part of the game. 
right? But what people see it as is well, it's just all squares and it's all ladders, and it just isn't the case. I mean, they hit a snake, they go, Well, how do you measure this? Yeah. Well, how you measured it is is how did you react to going down, you know, how did you react to the failure? Yeah. What did you learn? How quickly did you get back on your feet? How quickly did you apply what you learned? And how quickly did you start moving forward again? Yeah. And that's a measure of progress. One thing I started doing was just writing it down, you know, see when something ha happened or went through a bad patch and we failed at something. You just look back and you write, all, write it all down. You go, right, how can I get better at each part of this to make sure that I don't fail again? And then you go on to the next thing. You'll probably fail again. And then you just go back again. You write it all down and you make sure that you don't do it again. You know? So for the, how how did you learn how to do that? Just don't do what you've done before. <laughs> no, I'm saying how did you learn to have the foresight to write it all down? So obviously getting a good mentor at you at the start, you were you were teaching me how to do these that, these things. Um at the start of my journey years ago, um, you, you, that's one thing you drilled into me, was see if you fail, when you're going to fail at stuff, when you fail, go back and write it all down and make sure that, that doesn't happen again. So again, come back to getting a good mentor behind you at the start of your journey. Even if it's going to cost you thousands of pounds, you will tenfold that in, in the future if you, you do the right things. Well, here's the thing that happens, right? First of all, you get familiar with failure, right? So you, when a failure happens particularly if you're predisposed to hopium, which is I just hope it'll be all right. Yeah. What you'll do is you'll just let this thing slide into the background and it'll all be good. Right? But when you go in and you go say, right, I'm, I know that I don't want to look at this, but I'm going to go and look at it. Yeah. Right? A few things happen is you build in resistance to failure. So you, you then become aware, okay, this stuff happens. Right, That's number one. Yeah. You then change your perspective that failure is bad, right? Failure is a learning opportunity. It's not bad. It's just there's something you need to pick up. Then when you go into it, you realise that when you start to think about how it all worked out and you play it back through, the next thing that happens is you realise you go, oh, there's actually some good in this failure thing. Like, so I thought this failure thing was all bad, but I'm realising that there's actually some good that can come out of it. Right, that, well, that's a good bit. I, like, oh, if I'd done that, that might not have happened. Right, I'll write that down. Right, that's good. What's the next bit? Ah, right. I see. I can only see that looking at it now. I couldn't see that at the time. Right, let me note that down. Because you're right. in my head, doesn't yeah, it? And then you get those few nuggets of the, these gems of information, and now they're yours. You yeah. get to keep them. So next time you do it, guess what you've got? You've got two or three things from the last failure that now make you better. And then do go do that with every time that you fail. Guess how quickly you succeed. Yeah. Right, and your success came from what you learned in the failures. Yeah. That's the power of it. Put them in a toolbox. I can remember that what you said to me at the start as well. Mm -hmm. You get that. You've got that toolbox here, and see every time we do each part of this mentorship. And why can we not just do do it all, do it all the, the one time? You just show me what to do, and it'll be fine. You're like, no, you need to do this in parts. If you want it to be brilliant and amazing, with what you do in business, you need to do all the parts separately because each part you're going to fail. You're going to need to go back and you see all the wee nuggets that you said. That's in your toolbox. That's in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the top, you've got a full toolbox of good yeah. stuff there. You have all the equipment to succeed, yeah. but you pick them up along the way, and you don't pick them up on, along the way on the successes. Like half of them will be from your success, yep. and half of them will be from your failures. But if you avoid looking at your failures, you you will inevitably never get half the tools that you need. So you need to have the failures and have the process of going back through it and finding the little gems, finding the little tools that you can put in your toolbox. That you can say, right, I've collected the, these. It's like a game. You go back, you go, oh, I've collected these tools. That's great. I can go into the next level because the next level you need those tools. Yeah, definitely. And then you keep, you, the next level you go there, you have some successes and failures and the same thing happens again. And then you keep rising up to the point where you go, Right, I seem to have all the tools. Like I've collected, I've completed the, I've completed the this this uh, experience because that's great. I've I've reached the top because. Yeah. But was that one complete ascendance th through success? No, yeah. it was a completely wild, bumpy roller coaster ride of success, failure, 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 big success, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. And that's the key to it. That's what a lot of people they beat themselves up if they have a failure, uh, they maybe have a bit of doubt, maybe they uh, lack the resilience, uh, they fall into the victimhood trap, or oh, uh, poor me, it was a bad guys, they bad tradesmen, they that bad lawyer, blah, 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 right, okay, we'll cut them quick. Yeah. 
right, you're you're in charge. Like you are in charge. So you ha- like this playing this victim card isn't going to work. What is going to work is you take charge of what you can fix. Yeah. And then you go keep going through the process, and that's the key to doing it. So you've, you've just explained a really, really powerful tool there yeah. that a lot of people wouldn't I wouldn't think to do. Yeah, I mean, and it's, if you it's, if you try and do this alone, you're not going to know all these these wee tricks of the trade. So get a good mentor if you're going to want to uh, give this a good go. And again, if you want to go and check uh, George's uh, community geomcnee dot com, he'll be able to show you all this these tricks of the trade. Um, because it's not easy going alone, definitely isn't. We think of what we've just described as, like I've said to you, how many times I've said to you, when people come to me for advice, 99 times of 100 is a problem with their mindset. Yeah. right? And this mindset, what we've just described in this example was, uh, they don't want to look at their failures, they don't learn the lessons, they keep repeating the same things. That's, you know, that's not situational, that's a habit. And that habit comes from their mindset, like yeah. how they look at things. So a lot of the time you need to change that mindset, you need to change those habits. Uh, the key to doing it is is that if you look at the places that are not obvious, i.e. in failure, then you're going to get the nuggets. And you've, that, you're, a, you're living proof that it works. Yep. Well, that was a, a good episode for just showing everybody, like, everything's not sunshine and rainbows, but if you stick in and, and you, you do get a good mentor and you learn from your mistakes, you're going to come out the other side. Um, so thanks for listening to this one